Hello, AP Calculus AP students, and welcome back. We're going to be taking a look at our examples three and four together in this video, which is all going to be about the idea of taking the antiderivative or the integration of trigonometric functions. And you might think, well, is that something that you can do? I know we can take derivatives of them, but yes, if you think about the graph of a trig function, you can certainly find the area between that curve and the x-axis. And so by all means, we can take antiderivatives. So they're back. So let's take a look. We're going to dive in head first into our example three and I always like the to use this as my introduction to integrating and what we're going to be doing is talking about the six basic trig integration functions and I know when you look at this particular table you might think whoa these are basic ones right especially the ones in the second and third rows but these are indeed the basic ones. And there's an old adage about if you know something forwards and backwards, that tends to mean that you know it very well. And that is 100% true. The only problem is sometimes having to, to work hard to know something forwards and backwards is going to take a lot of effort. And I want to talk about different things that you can do to get very comfortable with this. So basically what you have here would be the answers to all of the derivatives that you learned in your first semester Calc AB course. So if I look at this cosine, I know that there was a function whose derivative that we took that equaled this cosine. And that's what we're looking at here. So what is the integral of cosine? What do you take the derivative of to get you a cosine? And the answer to that is sine of x. Now just like before we have to have a constant and so I'm going to tack on the plus c. So that's all that it takes. Okay so if I look over at the right side the integration of sine of x what would we take the derivative of that would produce sine? Well you might be thinking there really wasn't anything right? Now you might recall that the derivative of cosine was something, right? You remember hopefully that this produced negative time uh, sine of x. Well, but what if I just want to integrate sine of x? You know, that's an interesting way to think about. I don't want the negative there. Well, the negative would just float to the other side, and you would have cosine of x, what you're taking the derivative of that produces that negative sign, except you're going to toss the negative in with that answer. And I know it's a little tricky. The integration of sine of x is negative cosine of x plus c. Let's take a look at integration of secant squared. I know I'm kind of doing these in an unusual order, but I think this might be the uh, way that you're most comfortable. Integrate something, uh, integrate secant squared that produces something. Well, what would you take the derivative of that would produce secant squared? So you have to really dig deep and think. And the answer to that is tangent of x. The derivative of tangent was secant squared. And as always, add your plus c. Let's move down that right column the integral of secant times tangent. Well, the integral of secant times tangent is going to be secant of x because the derivative of secant was equal to secant times tangent. So hopefully you're starting to see how it works now. Over here on the other side, the integral of cosecant squared. Well, I bet that has a little bit of a similarity to this tangent x plus c that we've got here when we integrate it secant squared. And it does, except for the fact that it's a cotangent. That's one difference. And the other difference, we're going to have a negative in front. Now, let's think about that. Why is that? Well, if I work down here, if you remember the derivative of cotangent of x with respect to x, that would have been negative cosecant squared of x. So instead of putting this negative with my cosecant squared in the question that I ask, 
I'll withhold that negative and you will provide it in the answer. And the last one, the integration of cosecant times cotangent, very similar to secant, except it's going to be a cosecant and it will also have a negative in front as well. So there are your six basic trig integrals. I cannot recommend enough that at this point in the course that you really start thinking about putting together flashcards. And I know some students do that in the beginning stages of the first semester, which is fantastic. But you're going to start seeing a plethora of formulas coming at you uh, with integration. And it's, it's going to be um, vital that, that you um, have them memorized like the back of your hand. And I wouldn't um, say that it's a bad idea to still uh, look at your derivative cards because if you make a derivative of cosine of x card and you make an integration of sine of x card, you essentially have two different opportunities to learn that formula, that relationship. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out here to help you memorize, I'm going to highlight three of these answers and I want you to all think about what they all have in common. Cosine, cotangent, cosecant. Hopefully you all realize that those are the three that start with the letter C. And when I say those are the three, those are the three answers. Answers that start with the letter C. And you also probably notice that each one of those has a negative sign. And so that's the way that we can remember if we're positive or negative. If the answer to your integral starts with the letter C, you want a negative sign in front of it. Back in the derivative days, if you took the derivative of a trig function that starts with C, your answer is negative. So with derivatives, if your question is negative, I'm sorry, if your question starts with the letter C, your answer is negative. But with integration, it's if your answer starts with the letter C that you put a negative. So it's just a difference of like whether the C word is in the question, which is this, or if it's in the answer, which is this. So hopefully that'll help out. We're going to go ahead and take a look at just uh, a, a one quick example that has two parts. The integration of sine of x to dx, basic, uh, 2 times the sine of x dx. Basically, what I wanted to share with you here is the fact that that 2 constant drops straight down, just as we talked about before, and then you would integrate the sine of x as normal. And remember, we just talked about how the integral of the sine of x is negative cosine of x plus c. And that's fine for your answer. Uh, you could also, if you desire, float the negative out in front of the 2, which, to be honest, is the way that you're going to see it most often, uh, say, as a multiple choice option. All right, so for right now, you guys don't have a whole lot of variation in the kinds of functions that you can integrate that have trig words in them. Right now they are confined to these six expressions. And I know someone might think, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute. What about just integrating tangent of x? Or just maybe integrating secant of x? Those are not in this table. Well, they're not. And the reason is because neither of those were the answer to a derivative question from last semester but they're coming. Down the road, uh, just in about a week or so, you will be exposed to these antiderivative formulas. For right now, the only six that you know are going to be in this table. So when you get to a problem like B, that's going to suggest to you that you're probably going to have to work on this. You're going to probably have to manipulate this, use some kind of trigonometric tr reciprocal identity to see what this is equivalent to. So what I would suggest is maybe we think about this cosine squared just for a moment as being written as cosine times cosine. It's a thing. That's true, right? Well, big deal. What can we do with that? Well, at this stage, we can probably rewrite this as maybe sine over cosine. And now that I've used up the sine of x on top, I might just need a 1 on top of the second cosine of x. Notice that if I multiply the tops together, I still get sine of x. If I multiply the bottoms, I still get cosine squared. So we're still equivalent. 
But now I see that the sine over cosine is our good friend, the tangent. And the one over cosine is the secant function. And at this point, you hopefully hearken back to this formula here that says the integration of secant times tangent is positive secant x plus c. And that's what this answer would be. Okay. Like I said, there's not a lot of skill builder practice problems that are going to be asking you to take the integrals of the trig words. Basically, your assignment, your hidden assignment that I don't necessarily have on paper, is to know this box forwards and backwards. And the best way to do that is to start making flashcards. And you can make physical flashcards on your index cards. Just take an index card, cut it in half, and you can put you know, the question on the front and then the answer on the back and just flip. Um, or you could use a variety of uh, online options. Quizlet is another really, really good option that probably already has uh, some of these made for you. And if you just go on, you can actually download those and then you have an electronic version. And there's all sorts of apps that you can have on your phone that would allow this as well. And I think I'm gonna try to look at some of those options in a future video. Anyhow, I hope this helps. We'll see you next time.